What's up, YouTube? This is MathWiz97, and welcome to episode number two of my WWE 2K16 Universe Mode. Yes, I know it has been a little while since episode one, and I, I apologize for that, seriously. I've just been really busy the past couple of days, haven't had the chance to make videos. I actually had a school field trip the other day to New York, so that was that was uh, a journey. So that was fun, but um, now it's time to get back on the grind, get back on to making these videos. And I have a couple ready for commentary, so let's get to that. But we're kicking this episode off with Seth Rollins. That is right, Seth Rollins. He's looking confident. He's looking pretty excited after defeating Triple H at Money in the Bank. Of course, spoilers, if you haven't seen Money in the Bank, be sure to go check it out. Um, but yes, yeah, Seth Rollins did defeat Triple H in one hell of of a brawl that was not just a wrestling match that was a straight-out fight that was just brutal between those two men and in the end it was Seth Rollins who came out victorious well tonight we're gonna see what Seth Rollins has to say he's here to address the WWE Universe so let's hear let's hear it now I don't know about you guys but last night was one hell of an event Ziggy retained his world title while almost breaking his neck Goatface won the money in the bank just so he can jump ship to SmackDown and lose to CM Punk. And how about Roman Reigns? So close to victory, yet he ended up flat on his back at the mercy of that psychopathic Bray Wyatt. I think that deserves a round of applause. No? That's okay. Because those moments will be forgotten by SummerSlam anyway. The real selling point was my victory over Triple H, the King of Kings. You all were so thrilled to see Triple H kick my ass out of this company, but guess what? I'm still here, and Triple H is gone. And I wouldn't expect him back anytime soon, because I not only broke his body, but I broke his spirit. I beat Triple H with his own finisher. The pain and humiliation he must be enduring right now is so unbearable that he wouldn't be here even if he could be. And do you want to know what the best part of it is? I didn't lay a finger on Stephanie McMahon. Are you surprised? Have you forgotten what I said already? Forget SummerSlam, you'll all forget Money in the Bank by next week. I said before, you must be willing to do whatever it takes to become a superstar. That includes lying. I wasn't responsible for what happened to Stephanie McMahon. Hell, I couldn't care less about Steph or her family. All I care about is becoming the biggest superstar this company has ever seen. Bigger than Hulkamania, bigger than Austin 316, bigger than what The Rock is cooking, bigger than the dead man, bigger than John Cena, bigger than each and every legend in that Hall of Fame. By the time I retire, I'll be so successful that they'll need an entire Hall of Fame dedicated to Seth Rollins. I can see it now. Picture it with me. Walls covered with historic photos, a massive golden statue of yours truly holding every single title in existence, crowds of fanboys swarming about looking for an autograph, women screeching with lust as they try to get a photo, and to top it all off, a throne fit for a king. You might as well throw it in the center of a squared circle, because I am the king of this ring. Young talent will worship me like a god. Veterans will die in their retirement homes wishing they could have been half as successful as me. And punks like Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns will be trapped in some asylum somewhere, driven insane by the fact that they will never be able to lay a finger on me. That is, of course, assuming Ambrose hasn't been admitted already. I mean, let's be honest here. Dean Am Wait, what? You've got to be kidding me. This can't be... Oh my god! Shane McMahon! Shane McMahon is here on Monday Night Raw. Well, well, well. Look what we have here. An arrogant punk with a god complex. Like I haven't seen that before. Why so surprised, Seth? You didn't expect to see me? Listen, kid. The McMahon family won't go down that easily. You might have beaten Hunter. You might have injured my father. And you might have even attacked my sister. Hold on, Shane. I just said that I did- Even so, I won't allow you to use my sister for your personal benefits. Besides, you openly admitted to attacking my father and my brother-in-law, 
And granted, I may not have the best of ties with those two, but that doesn't mean I'll let you soil the McMahon name. Did you honestly believe this would end at Money in the Bank? You thought you could just win a match and walk away? If there's one thing you should know about Triple H, it's that he always has a plan B. And plan B is this. Prior to last night, Hunter and I had a little chat. To make a long story short, I have been given the authority to book your matches for the entire month of August, including SummerSlam. That's stupid! You can't just walk in but here- But that's only the beginning, Seth. You see, not only have I been given power, but Triple H has opened a brand new management position to ensure that you're kept in check until he returns. As of this very moment, Kane has been named the new Director of Operations. It will be his responsibility to keep you under control if my own plan should fail. And speaking of which, I'd like to announce your first match for SummerSlam. In four weeks' time, at the biggest party of the summer, you, Seth Rollins, will go one-on-one -on -one in a no-holds-barred match against me, Shane McMahon. Wait, wait, wait. A match against you? Is that supposed to frighten me? Triple H couldn't beat me, and he's a WWE legend. Why should I be afraid of fighting you? You're not even a wrestler. What makes you think you can stand up to me? You know, it's funny you should mention that. I'm not a wrestler, I'll admit that. I've competed in the past, but I'm by no means a skilled competitor. That brings me to your second match. Ooh, wrestling twice in one night. Listen, Shane, I know you're trying to look tough for your family, and I applaud you for trying, but there isn't a single superstar in that locker room that I can't beat. It doesn't matter who you throw at me. Even if I have to fight you first, I'll still win. Now just stop this act. You can't scare me into apologizing. Oh, I don't want you to apologize. I don't even want you to lose. I just want to see you get what's coming to you. Because your second match will be against... Oh, hold on, Seth. Seth, look out behind you. Look at that. It's Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose is back on Raw as well. Oh my god, what a, what a night this is. Just a, This is only the first few minutes and we're already... Things are breaking down here on Raw. Shane McMahon, he has arrived in universe mode. He's back in the WWE and now Dean Ambrose... Oh, but Seth Rollins looks to shut down the rally. But Ambrose bounces back. Dean Ambrose bounces back with a clothesline, and he just dropped Seth Rollins, and now he's looking to do it again. Seth Rollins stumbles to his feet. Oh, but look at this. Dean Ambrose hooks the arms. Double DDT right there. The double underhook DDT from Dean Ambrose. And he just absolutely planted Seth Rollins' skull into the mat right there. Dean Ambrose is back, baby. And we've already got the match card set in place for SummerSlam. Shane McMahon, huge announcement, and with huge, even bigger implications for this month's pay-per-view, which is SummerSlam. Thank you all for joining me for this edition of Universe Mode. As you can see, for the actual match card, we have the United States Championship Open Challenge. It will, of course, be... It'll, it'll be back. We're bringing it back, as Cesaro will be challenging any superstar on the Raw roster. Uh, as we see, we have... Our truth and The Miz, Awesome Truth, picking up a tag team victory there. Naomi is going to go one-on-one -on -one with Cameron in a singles matchup. We have Ryback scoring a big victory over Booker T. Ryback has been riding a nice wave of momentum over the past several weeks. And then it looks like The Big Show defeats Christian, who had Edge in his corner. So Christian, excuse me, Christian, the woes continue for him. And in the main event, Dolph Ziggler, the World Heavyweight Champion, is going to go one-on-one -on -one with Connor of the Ascension, also one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions. That's going to be big. Oh, wait a minute! Well, look at this. This is just a huge night of surprises tonight. Look at this. Diamond Dallas Page. And it appears as though Diamond Dallas Page is going to be the man to accept Cesaro's United States Championship Open Challenge tonight. Well... Normally, Cesaro comes out first, but it looks as though DDP, he's just so raring to go that he decided to make his entrance first. And look at this, the crowd, they are on their feet, bang! DDP. Man, DDP is here in universe mode, wow. Talk about what, like, what a night this is to kick off 
kick off this season of Universe Mode. Shane McMahon, Dean Ambrose returning, and then we have Diamond Dallas Page. This is this is a big night so far, but we'll see if Cesaro can live up to this hype. As, of course, he is coming off of his match at Money in the Bank. Of course, he was one of the six men in the Money in the Bank ladder match. And it was down to him and Daniel Bryan there at the very end. And Cesaro, he fought very valiantly, and he damn near was able to capture the briefcase for himself. But fell just a little short of the mark. And, of course, we, we all know what happened then. Daniel Bryan went on to win the Money in the Bank match. He is now Mr. Money in the Bank. But Cesaro had one hell of a performance in that matchup. But it's back to, it's back to basics for Cesaro. Back to the United States Championship Open Challenge. And I gotta say, when you're think think about it here, we have Cesaro who just competed in this grueling matchup this past Sunday, just just last night at Money in the Bank. But here he here he is the very next night on Raw, still willing to defend his United States Championship in this Open Challenge. I gotta say that is that is dedication, that is true endurance right there shown by Cesaro. And perhaps it's just a little bit of arrogance, or maybe he's just that that sure of himself that he can win, or that he can retain the United States Championship here tonight. Although that's not, I don't think that's necessarily what Cesaro is going for. I mean, true, he is putting his, his talents on display for the entire world to see. This is certainly a good way for Cesaro to boost his status here on Raw. But it's also putting the United States title on display, which of course, you know, I would have to say over the previous, you know, in the first season of Universe Mode, the first whole year leading up to WrestleMania, it seemed as though the Intercontinental Championship was the more sought-after title. It seemed like it had just a bit more prestige than that United States Championship. I mean, we had Christian, he held the gold for quite a while. Then, of course, it was Ryback who had his 192-day title reign, which is tied with the Wyatt family for the longest reigning championship title reign in the series thus far. But since WrestleMania, once Cesaro won that U.S. title, I feel like it the balance of power has started to shift a little bit. Cesaro, he's brought more credibility back to that title, brought a bit more credibility to Monday Night Raw. And, I mean, Cesaro, he really has been putting on great matches here in these opening contests on Monday Night Raw. But now, I mean, you know, he can never prepare for these kind of matches as well, and that really shows how Cesaro can adapt to his opponents in the ring. I mean, we saw he's faced the likes of Ric Flair, Kevin Nash, you know, these returning legends. DDP can be thrown to that list as well, but he has also been forced to face some of the best in our industry today. Indi bleh, industry today, someone like a Daniel Bryan, who nearly won the U.S. title from Cesaro on the last episode of Monday Night Raw. As we see, look at Cesaro, look at the strength here. A double underhook suplex, and he held him up there for a little bit. Just letting the blood rush to the, the head of Diamond Dallas Page. And now Cesaro just working down DDP. Just working on the head, the neck of Page right there. And of course, Cesaro, like I said, a lot of superstars competed in that Money in the Bank match last night. And they all suffered quite a beating. But Cesaro, he's really, the very next night on Raw, he's out here competing. We don't see Seth, or, er, yeah, we don't see Curtis, I can't even talk. Let me take a moment, to apologize for that, but Cesaro, he's out here the very next night, and it's not like Cesaro was booked into this match by the general manager or anything. This is a matchup that Cesaro orchestrated himself. He didn't, he did not have to defend his title tonight. He could have, he could have taken the night off and recovered from the Money in the Bank ladder match, but no, he's here tonight defending that title with everything he's got and I gotta say that is something that that is something that Titus O'Neil if you're watching you could uh take a take a note or two on that because I mean Cesaro he's just the epitome of what a champion should be at least he's proven himself to be so in the past several weeks as we see now Cesaro lifting DDP up off the mat for a gut wrench suplex and I suppose not only to address Titus O'Neil in that regard but you know, also, just really send a message to all the champions, to, to Dolph Ziggler, to to CM Punk, to The Ascension, even to, even to Paige. Just send a message to everybody that, hey, you know, I'm raising the bar. It's about time that some of you guys up there stepped up as well. As Cesaro again, gut-wrench suplex there to DDP, taking him down. 
And you can see Cesaro is feeling it. He's feeling the energy from the WWE Universe. As Cesaro with a European uppercut staggers DDP. And now wait counter and DDP dumps Cesaro out to the floor. And now it's DDP looking to go on the offensive here. And this would be a big opportunity for DDP tonight. I mean, perhaps looking to resurrect his career. Oh, what a move there. What a move planting Cesaro on the outside. But DDP, if he's looking to resurrect his career, perhaps get a good start here in universe mode, winning the United States Championship in your first match back is definitely a good way to do that. As he's got Cesaro right now. Picks him up, looking for... Oh, look at this. Pump handle gut buster there. Big time move. And Cesaro's in trouble. DDP hooks the leg. One, two, three. No, not not quite yet. DDP, you got to do a little more than that to put down the United States champion. But I got to say, DDP, if you want a shot at that title, now's the perfect time. I mean, Cesaro, he did just go through that grueling match just last night in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and he was taken to his limits. Along with, like I said, the other five men in that matchup, they really tore the house down. But that's not something you just recover from. You're going to be feeling the effects of that for the next several weeks. As Cesaro, look at this move. Power bomb. Power bomb right there to DDP as he goes for the cover. One, two, no, not even a two count. DDP, he doesn't want to show any signs of weakness. I mean, he has been out of the ring for quite some time. DDP perhaps feeling obligated that he can't afford to show any signs of weakness at this stage in the game. But Cesaro looking perhaps for another gut wrench suplex. Oh, not just one. Cesaro, he's looking for the trifecta. Two. And DDP, this is a, he's in a bad way right now. Cesaro nails it. The third, he gets the hat trick. As DDP gets sent down into the mat. Hooks the leg. Two, not even a two count DDP again powers out at a count of one in Cesaro well he can't believe it but you know DDP at the same time sacrificing that second count he's giving up some valuable time to perhaps to recuperate to catch his breath before kicking out instead a power bomb a power bomb to Cesaro and DDP into the cover two no another kick out by Cesaro that that was very close that was damn near a three count right there we almost had a new United States champion and DDP now picking Cesaro back up to his feet. And now he's going to throw him over there into the corner. DDP, he's got Cesaro on the ropes now as we see kick to the gut. DDP going to the outside. What is he going to do here? Well, he's got Cesaro by that ring post. Oh, I don't like where this is going at all. Oh, my God. DDP! DDP! A figure four around the ring post. Just look at that. Cesaro's leg, his knees being bent all out of place. And that's a good way to try to take Cesaro out of this matchup. And now look at DDP. Another submission hold. This one, once again, to the legs of Cesaro. And this is a good way to try to neutralize the power of Cesaro. Is to take out the legs. Take out his ability to, to stand. He won't be able to lift you up if he can't even stand. And now sent face first into the steel ring post. Cesaro, he's not looking too good right now. The, you can definitely see the effects of Money in the Bank taking their toll. As Cesaro, he's starting to slow down here. And DDP, he is taking full advantage of that. Big forearm right to the face of the Swiss Superman. Oh, but now it's a counter by Cesaro. And he pulls him back into a Samoan drop right there. And just like that, when you start to count Cesaro out, he's right back in it. As Cesaro... Sends DDP into the corner. Nice axe handle right to the back of Diamond Dallas Page. He's going to spin him around now. Perhaps put him in position for something else. Nice shoulder barge into the into the gut. And now look at this. Oh, running European uppercut. Square to the jaw of DDP. And now Cesaro drops the knee right across the face of DDP. And you can see both of these men, the effects of this matchup, are taking their toll. DDP and Cesaro have both suffered a lot in this matchup. But Cesaro and DDP continue to fight on. Cesaro continues to bring the assault as he cracks the neck. Could be looking for the finishing blow. European uppercut. 
European uppercut there from Cesaro, and that might have just taken DDP's head off. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. That is it, folks. DDP, what a return for him. But, unfortunately, he's just not going to walk out with the title tonight as Cesaro, Cesaro, a very game Cesaro, manages to walk out here tonight with the United States Championship still in his possession. And not for lack of trying from DDP, mind you. DDP definitely brought the fight to Cesaro tonight. Perhaps a fight that Cesaro wouldn't be expecting from someone like DDP. Somebody who's, you know, not the average competitor in the ring today. He's definitely a legend in this business. But still, DDP, he really did bring it his A-game here tonight. But unfortunately for him, it just, it just wasn't enough. Cesaro, he's on too much, he's got too much momentum, he's on too much of a winning streak, and, you know, he may have lost at Money in the Bank, but still, he put up a hell of a performance, enough to really keep this freight train of momentum rolling, and it's going to be interesting to see just how long is Cesaro going to be able to keep this up. I mean, you know, it's one thing to go out there and put on these matches, despite, you know, he competed at Money in the Bank, I mean, just go out there the next night and steal the show yet again, but that's going to take its toll on your body after a while, and Cesaro, I don't know exactly how much, how long he's going to be able to keep this up, just how durable this man can be, but I guess that's a question for another time, because right now, Cesaro, he can celebrate with that championship in his grasp, and you can see he's holding it up high for the fans to see Cesaro, he... Well, you know, The Rock likes to call himself the People's Champion. I feel like at this point in time, Cesaro is the People's Champion. And he proves it night in and night out that he is the best thing on Monday Night Raw. And it's only a matter of time until he gets that shot at the World Heavyweight Championship. But now we're going to shift gears here a little bit. We're going to move on to the second of our three matchups this evening. And this is a women's wrestling match tonight, folks, as it is Naomi taking on her former tag team partner. The former Funkadactyls will compete against each other here tonight as she will be taking on Cameron. And this, this matchup has a little bit of implications for SummerSlam as well. We saw last night at Money in the Bank that Paige won the Divas Championship triple threat matchup against Emma and Tamina. Well, because of, the, because of what went down last night, we have determined that there will be a six women battle royal at SummerSlam for the Divas Championship and one of this one of these two participants in the matchup tonight we're about to see taking place right now will have the opportunity to join that match because very recently I mean we had Paige when she won the title at Extreme Rules she's kind of been facing the same people I mean it was Paige and Brie Bella at Extreme Rules, Paige and Brie Bella at Over the Limit, then it was Tamina and Paige at Payback, and then again at Money in the Bank, Paige and Tamina were both in the fray, Emma was there as well, but I feel like the Divas division here is starting to undergo a bit of change, I feel like we're starting to make a shift in the right direction with these young ladies, and I feel as though it's about time that some of these, some of these women get title shots that they haven't exactly been given the opportunity to have. I mean, very lately, it's been a lot of, you know, these newer people that are coming onto the roster, like these two in the ring right now, Cameron and Naomi, really haven't had that opportunity to challenge for the Divas Championship, and this gives them a good opportunity to at least get their foot in the door. It might not be a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but it's 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 a it's an opportunity. It's better than nothing, and well, perhaps you know. There is a small chance, but it's still a chance that they could walk out of SummerSlam as the Divas Champion. So we'll have to find out. Well, this matchup could have huge implications as to who could be the favorite heading into the SummerSlam pay-per-view. As SummerSlam, it definitely is shaping up to be a heck of a match card. I mean, I've got a good feeling as to what Daniel Bryan's going to be doing with that Money in the Bank briefcase. And then, of course, we have what was declared earlier on, the matchup, as it will be Shane McMahon taking on Seth Rollins. And later that night, Seth Rollins is going to compete again against Dean Ambrose, who made his shocking return tonight. This is going to be this is going to be a big SummerSlam match card. I hope you're all ready for it. I'm certainly excited for it, as Money in the Bank was really... 
I feel like we raised the bar with Money in the Bank, but I think it's about time that with SummerSlam, we're gonna we're we're gonna try to rip the bar off the hinges. We're gonna try to do something something big, something groundbreaking here to this universe mode. We're gonna try to push we're gonna try to push that that um I don't know. I can't think of a metaphor for it, I'm sorry. But anyways, focusing back in on the matchup, a huge spinning heel kick to the face of Cameron. And you see Naomi doing a little bit of a strut there. She's showing her confidence as a Hurricanrana taking down Cameron. Naomi, she's been doing a good job at boosting her credibility here in the Divas Championship picture. I mean, she's been getting she's been getting wins, she's been getting some losses as well, but she's been for the, for the most part, she's been she hasn't really gained any ground, but she hasn't lost much ground either. If anything, she has been um, getting her name out there and perhaps building a little bit of a uh, bit of a head of steam. But then we have Cameron, who was really just kind of pushed down by Naomi. I mean, Naomi just sort of forgot about the Funkadactyls, just kind of left Cameron in the dust. And Cameron, she she was really struggling. She was losing match after match, just could not buy a victory. But now tonight, Cameron, she's got her opportunity at redemption against Naomi, perhaps to prove that she was the greater Funkadactyl. The greater of the two. Perhaps Cameron looking to prove that she was the Shawn Michaels to Naomi's Marty Jannetty. We'll see if that is the case. Tonight is the perfect opportunity to see who is the better of the Funkadactyls. As Naomi tosses Cameron off the ropes. Big kick to the face. Beautiful drop kick there from Naomi. As Cameron, she is stunned right now. Naomi has really brought this fight to a new level. She's really taken it to Cameron, as now she's over there in the corner, sunset flip moonsault, sunset flip, what am I saying, a split leg moonsault, if I can call the moves correctly, and now Cameron, well she's struggling to get to her feet, she can barely stand, and now Naomi, what the heck is, oh my god, what was that, well whatever it was is effective, as Naomi hooks the leg, and that is it, Cameron, she's out cold, and you know, rightfully so, that move, what was, it was like a, like a leg lock DDT of some sort. I I don't know. Whatever it was, it was innovative offense by Naomi, but you see there, Naomi looking to extend the hands, and I almost feel as though that was disrespectful there by Naomi. I mean, you'd think normally it was, it's respectful to show, you know, to reach for a handshake, but you know, the way Naomi did it, it just seemed like she was kind of patronizing Cameron. Like, you know, good job, kid. You know, you had, you, tried your best, but good job, kid. Just didn't really seem like Naomi was... It didn't seem like her heart was in the right place, and Cameron, you know, I, I wouldn't shake Naomi's hand either. I mean, Naomi, she really just has... It's been all about Naomi as of late. She really has just kind, kind of left Cameron in the dust and forgotten about the Funkadactyls. So it's understandable that Cameron's gonna be a little frustrated, uh, and you know, she just lost an opportunity at the Divas Championship as well. That's definitely gotta be on her mind. But as, you know, I meant to mention, but I didn't quite get to it during the during that past match, the Divas Championship Battle Royal will also feature Paige, Tamina, and Emma, the three who participated in the match at Money in the Bank. So Naomi now makes the fourth competitor. We're going to have another qualifying matchup on SmackDown. And then next week on Raw, we will have our final qualifying match for that Battle Royal. So be sure to stay tuned for those. But now it is time for the main event. As we can see, the World Heavyweight Champion Dolph Ziggler has hit the ring, and now we are about to see the the chilling entrance of perhaps one of the most destructive forces in Universe Mode history as the Ascension makes their way down to the ring. Of course, the Ascension, famous for dethroning the Wyatt Family's legendary tag team title reign, and that, that is... That's no easy feat by any means. The Wyatt family, they were just mowing down team after team, the Shield included. And really, I mean, like we were talking about how the Wyatt family and the Shield were the most destructive tag teams in Universe Mode history. The Ascension, they're looking to make a case to throw their names in that hat as well. And they've done a good job at doing that. I mean, barely, it was a little outside of a month of their debut that they challenged for the tag team titles and won. They won the tag team tournament, and then they went on to defeat the Wyatt family. That's certainly a way to make a first impression. As we can see right now, Victor, he's out here at ringside as well. 
And I don't I don't know how to feel for Dolph Ziggler in a matchup like this. I kind I fear for him a little bit. I gotta be honest. Ziggler he took a hell of a fall at Money in the Bank and landed r he landed very awkwardly on the top of his head. Nearly I'm surprised he didn't break his neck. I I'm even more shocked that he's out here competing tonight. I thought for sure he must have suffered some sort of severe nerve damage or something from that matchup. But Ziggler he's still out here tonight. But I, there's no way, there is absolutely no way Dolph Ziggler is at 100% after that fall he took. I mean, I, I just can't, I can't see it. That would have to be a miracle for Ziggler to not have sustained any sort of injury from that fall. But whatever the case, he is out here tonight. And I don't know if this is just, uh, if this is, he's got more guts than sense or if he's, I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to think for Ziggler, but tonight he's in, a, he's in a bad scenario right off the bat. I mean, not only is he taking on Connor, this just behemoth of a man, one half of the tag team champions, but Victor is out there as well. And if I'm Dolph Ziggler, I would not want to face either of these two men because they've shown their track record. They can, they've decimated the Usos on two separate occasions. They dominated the Wyatt family. I mean, really, what else do they have to prove? And now, well, look at this. Connor looking for that deadlift powerbomb. We've seen it before. And there's just that display of power on the part of Connor as he goes for the cover. That's a two count. Oh, and almost right off the bat, Connor getting the victory over Ziggler. But Ziggler manages to hang on. Connor again looking for a powerbomb. Oh, but Ziggler. Ziggler slips out of it. And a beautiful dropkick from Dolph Ziggler. But you can see Ziggler, typically he starts he's, he starts out the match on the upper hand. He typically has the high pace going for him, but tonight he's really just been he's been having some trouble. Connor really has taken the early advantage in this matchup. Oh, and now a nice back elbow counter there from Connor. It looked like Ziggler was starting to mount some offense, but Connor shuts that down with a huge boot to the face. Might have broken Ziggler's nose with a boot like that. As Connor now, just, uh, you, you can see right now, it's almost like he's just toying with Ziggler. Oh, what a brutal elbow, and another one, but Ziggler's still not going down. Oh, a third elbow from Connor. Just vicious, ferocious moves there from Connor, and he's looking to really rattle Ziggler's brains with moves like that. As Connor now, he's got Ziggler in position for an exploder suplex, and he hooks the leg, and that could be it. I mean, this is really one-sided so far, but Ziggler kicks out. Ziggler, he, he continues to fight. Although at this point, I don't know how much fight he's got left in him. As Connor again looking for a powerbomb, Ziggler again slips out of it. And now there's a back elbow from Ziggler, another elbow to the face. And now he's backed Connor into a corner, and this is what Ziggler needs to do. He has to shut down the power of Connor. Look at this, Tornado DDT. Ziggler, he's got to utilize that speed advantage he has. Utilize his pure athleticism, his technicality. As he goes to the top rope here, elbow drop to Connor. Right to the heart of the big man. And now he hooks the leg. One, two, not even a two count, Connor powers out. And that just goes to show that Ziggler, he's going to have to get a little more offense than just an elbow drop to finish off Connor. But Ziggler, you can see he's just waiting for Connor. Oh, but Connor counters. Ziggler, oh wait a minute, flapjack! Flapjack there by Connor, planting Ziggler right on his face. And that might have just knocked him out cold. Connor hooks the leg, two count. And yes, that is it folks, Connor scores the win in what was a rather quick matchup, but like I was saying, Ziggler, there's no way he's at 100% there tonight. I don't even know if he was at 50%. Ziggler, he just seemed completely out of it tonight. And in the end, that's just Another name to add to the Ascension's list of, you know, their achievements here in Universe Mode. Not only have they defeated the tag teams I mentioned previously, but now Connor has, he's got a singles victory over Dolph Ziggler. And Victor didn't even need to get involved in the matchup. Connor just decimated Ziggler in this matchup. Don't know if that's entirely fair because Ziggler isn't exactly in the best, uh, best shape physically at this point. But still, it's a victory over the world champion. That's what's going to go down in the record books. Regardless of what 
what I mean ultimately Ziggler he came out here for this match tonight so you really can't take anything away from Connor's victory Ziggler's the one who put himself in this predicament in the first place and I don't know if that's just if that's just stubbornness on the part of Dolph Ziggler if he really thinks that he can go out there and compete but obviously tonight you know he had seems though he he couldn't I don't know if he really was ready to compete tonight of all the people who needed to take a night night off I think Ziggler should have he shouldn't have been out here tonight but he did he came out here and now he paid the price as Connor gets that victory and oh my god you gotta be kidding me this is uncalled for at this point you've already won the match but now Victor's in the ring and a fall of man to Dolph Ziggler well the ascension you want to make a statement that's how you do it you win the match and then well you you do that you just completely decimate the world heavyweight champion ladies and gentlemen that is it for this episode I hope you enjoyed it be sure to stay tuned for the next one which will be out sooner this time hopefully and until that next episode, keep on YouTubing.